how I achieved financial security after listening to Rich Dad Poor Dad and how it can do the same for you. Stay tuned. Welcome back to another edition of Drow Talks Audiobooks. Drow here, and today I'm going to be talking about Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, narrated by Tim Willard. Before we get started, do me a solid and this channel a solid and invest in pressing that like button, become a YouTube entrepreneur and subscribe. That way you can stay tuned for the latest in audiobook content. Rich Dad Poor Dad was first published in 1997. So why am I talking about a book that's 23 years old? Well, today in our current economic situation that we find ourselves in, there are some lessons in this audiobook that I think are worth discussing and worth sharing. And as I mentioned in my intro, helped me obtain a sense of financial security that I hadn't seen in the majority of my life and how it can do the same for you. I have both read the book and listened to the book and if you have the option, I suggest you use the audiobook, uh, especially the one narrated by Tim Willard. He really does bring this story to life. The basic outline of this book is very simple. It's a story of Robert Kiyosaki growing up in Hawaii where he was raised by two fathers. One was his biological father which was a man that had a PhD and was head of one of the universities there, but somehow he was financially poor. And then his best friend's dad, who was a high school dropout, an entrepreneur, and was financially wealthy. Now, Robert Kiyosaki is very controversial in the financial world. Some of the principles that he uh, believes in, practices, preaches, are... Mm, borderline legal. Uh, he, I would consider him the father of pyramid schemes. So just keep that in consideration. But even though he might not be the most outstanding citizen on the planet, his book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, has some very fundamental advice that everyone should know and listen to and utilize. I grew up financially illiterate. My parents knew about as much about money as, as the next person. And I grew up with that knowledge. When I read this book and then afterwards listened to this book, there were some key philosophies that really challenged my concept of how to manage money and really set me on a path that allowed me to reach a sense of financial security like I hadn't been able to achieve prior in my life. One of the big concepts in this book is what does it mean to be wealthy? When I was growing up, I put a dollar sign on what wealthy was. If you were making millions of dollars, you were wealthy. If you were making thousands of dollars, you were not wealthy. Well, Robert Kiyosaki turns this type of thinking on its head. So you can be making millions of dollars, but if you're spending more than you make, guess what? You might be living at an altered state, but you're actually financially poor. On the other hand, you could be making thousands of dollars, but if you're living below that means, you're actually financially wealthy. The big key is the majority of us sacrifice time in order to receive a paycheck. This is just the way it is. It's called a job. We all have one. Well, the majority of us have one. And this is a key difference and one of the fundamental rules that Robert Kiyosaki points out in his book. Because your time, when you're working for someone, you're accepting low market value for your time. And this is a fundamental difference between wealthy people and poor and middle class people. To quote Robert Kiyosaki, the poor and middle class work for money while the wealthy have money work for them. Now this it seems kind of obvious, but it is something that most of us do not really understand what it means and how to make it happen and how easy it actually really is. So how can a normal person with a regular job actually achieve this level of wealth? Well, there are many ways to do it, as I mentioned before, but one very simple and basic guideline, and that this was the curtain lifted from my eyes that really made me consider how I was managing money. Paraphrasing Robert Kiyosaki, rich and wealthy people invest their money in assets or poor and middle class people invest their money in liabilities. So what is an asset and what is a liability? There's many ways to explain this, but the simplest way is an asset is something that generates value over time or a liability generates debt over time. So if you have a credit card, that's a liability. You have a car loan, that's a liability. You have a mortgage on your house, that's a liability. If you own stocks, that's an asset. If you own a mortgage, 
but that property is producing income greater than the mortgage that you're paying, it's an asset. So it's anything that you own or purchase that actually generates money. So the, one of the simplest ways to actually gain financial freedom is by investing in the stock market. I know it's risky, especially now of all times, but actually now is the time you should be investing. I'm gonna pull up a graph. So it's gonna be about right here, courtesy of Dave Ramsey's website. If you were to invest $200 a month from the age of 30 to 65, you would retire with over a million dollars. It's that simple. $50 a week. That's the equivalent to giving out a couple nights of eating out a week and you could become a millionaire. It's that simple. The average car payment is over $500. So if you were just not to have a car payment, it'd be very easy to invest $200 and retire with over a million dollars. And then the trick is when you have that million dollars and you're getting ready to retire, you don't start pulling it out. You're living off of the interest it earns. So when you do pass on from this world, you actually have a large inheritance to leave to your loved ones. Very simple, something everyone can do. That is the easiest way to financial freedom. It's not a short path, but it is a certain path. In this audiobook, Robert Kiyosaki does discuss about leveraging debt in order to make uh, money. So this is very uh, similar to the example I used. If you take out a mortgage on a property, and let's say you pay $1,000 a month, you know, taxes, insurance, mortgage, and everything, but you're renting that property out for $1,500, well, you have a $500 positive cash flow. That's passive income. That's money working for you. Now, if you use that $500 or a portion of it, because uh, you're gonna have to use some portion of it to maintain the property, but if you were to use a portion of that $500 and invest it in the stock market or any, anything of that nature, now, now, you're starting to think more along the lines of a wealthy person where you're having money work for you. But any time that you use debt to acquire wealth, you're also accepting risk. So this is an individual decision that everyone needs to make, but you do gotta understand if you owe, you're accepting the risk of that debt. So there are three basic concepts in this book and I've kind of overviewed most of them already. The first is just the story of the two dads and how they uh, handle money and how they have money work for them or how they work for money. The second concept is anyone can become wealthy. And this is true. Anyone, it don't matter what type of degree you have, what type of career you have, you could be a waiter, you could be working at McDonald's, you could be a college professor, you could be a welder, a mechanic, it does not matter. As I mentioned, $200 a month, over 30 years, and you're a millionaire. It's really that simple. Probably the most valuable piece of advice that Robert Kiyosaki has in this entire book is the distinction between wealthy people and poor and middle class people. You, you get out of college and you get a job and you're excited and you wanna buy that Corvette. So you get in a loan to you buy a Corvette and then you gotta buy really nice clothes because you gotta impress the people that you work with. So you get a credit card and you rack that up and everything that you just bought comes with debt, comes with interest and now you've got money working against you. You bought a Corvette for $50,000. They probably cost more than that, but let's just pretend it costs $50,000. But you're going to end up paying $80,000 in interest. And when you're finished paying that Corvette, it's going to be worth $20,000. You're working backwards. So other types of assets. Well, we mentioned mortgage. We mentioned the stock market. But that's not the only things you can do. Obviously, your job is an asset, but it depends on your time. And then it depends on the value that that employer is offering for your time. It's not a sustainable asset if you stop working, you stop getting paid. So how did Robert Kiyosaki employ this to obtain the wealth that he has attained? Like I said, he does preach a lot of strategies that are borderline illegal. And actually people have gotten in trouble for trying to use some of these strategies. I personally don't recommend it. But his main source of income, funny enough, comes from his poor dad. You see, Robert Kiyosaki, first and foremost, is an educator. He's a financial educator, starting with this audiobook. So he charges for education. And this is probably 
the biggest selling point from this book. The biggest way to financial security is becoming financially literate. We went over a few basic concepts. I don't want this video to be too long, but do yourself a favor and become financially literate. You can start by listening to this audiobook, and there are other audiobooks that I'll link in the description below. But the more information you have and the more understandings you have around money, the better and quicker you will obtain financial security. And for God's sakes, start investing in a 401k. That way you can retire with that sweet, sweet million dollars. So in summary, the key takeaways from this book is one, become financially literate. This, this audio book is a good first step to take towards that path. The next step, create a budget. Live within your means. That way you can get to step two, eliminate any sources of negative cash flow. If you have any type of debt that's charging you interest, eliminate it but however you can. Remember, anytime you pay interest, you're making someone else rich. So cut that out. Step four, invest. It could be in bonds. I suggest the stock market. Uh, mutual funds is probably the safer option to go. Do not invest in single stocks because you'll more likely lose. The vast majority of people that do do that lose. Learn from Enron. Move to step five, which is look for any way to create passive income. It could be through a hobby. It could be through creating a business, a YouTube channel, writing a book, whatever you got to do. But passive income is a key critical step into achieving financial security. As always, thank you for listening. This has been Drogue Talks. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.